Hello, everybody. My name is Reckoning. You are the viewer. And last time on Let's We Got Up Shoujo, Evie got sick because you ran in the fucking rain. Yeah. And we might actually get to Act 3 in this part. Or, like, right after it. Ooh. So let's get started. And now back to my regular voice. <clears throat> a night of restlessness has left me feeling very, fairly groggy this morning. The events of the previous day keep intruding upon my mind. The memory of how Emmy felt against me. The memory of our wrestling match. I want to see this is moment of decision. Oh my god, this music is very like. And most bothersome, the memory of her nightmare. She was in so much pain. I can't stop wondering what it must be like for her to wake up with nobody there. The shower shocks me awake with hot water. Awake, but still worried. What will happen today? Will things just go back to normal? End of the episode? The episode just started to sell! It's not the end already! God damn! Back to the status quo? There was a connection yesterday. Something that nearly pushed us past the boundaries of normal friendship. Would that have been so bad? My mind goes back to the look in Emmy's eyes after our pillow fight. It almost seemed like she was daring me to go on. Almost. But I can't know for sure. Anyway, the track captain's probably first in her affections. But even as I say that, my mind is already snoring derisively. I'm just looking for an excuse. A reason for everything to go wrong. A reason to not try. It's not as if I've ever seen the two of them together, together outside of track practice. And he, clearly he's never visited. Amy said as much herself. If they were close, surely he'd visit. I'm such a wuss. I ought to just go for it anyway. Damn the consequences. That's just what Amy would do. Hell. I, I think. Hell, I know that's what she'd do. Which is partially why I'm convinced there's no interest on her end. She hasn't acted either. Maybe because of this track captain. It's possible she's got a bit of an unrequited crush thing going on. But who would be able to clarify the relationship? It sure as hell can't be Emmy. Probably just laugh and ask what I wanted to know. I'm not ready for that answer yet. Or not ready to answer that yet. Ren. Ren would probably just give me some cryptic answer or something. And then with my luck, she'd just ask Emmy, who would ask me why I wanted to know, and I've already covered that problem. I wonder. Could I get away with asking the nurse? He seems pretty protective of Emmy. I'm sure he'd know something was up. And he owes me for not letting Emmy... He owes me for not letting Emmy know he forgot to tell me about her being ill, so he'll keep quiet. What if he asks me why I want to know, though? I can shake him off. Just say I'm curious as a friend. He'll buy that, won't he? Of course! That's settled, then. After the run, I'll talk to him while wait Emmy's waiting outside the office. There's no sign of Emmy when I arrive at the track. Is she still too ill? I decide to give her ten minutes. I'm a little early, and she was ill yesterday, so if she takes a while to show up, it shouldn't be surprising. Still, I hate to just waste my time, so I occupy myself by stretching and pacing back and forth anxiously. What if I went too far yesterday? What if she doesn't come because she's embarrassed? What if... You're early again, Hassel. I'm impressed. Just like that, I feel some of the tension leaving my body. Amy seems to be bright and cheerful as usual, with no sign that she was even ill the other day, much less had a less than restful sleep. Still, I have to ask. Sleep well last night? It's just a throwaway question. Small talk. The sort of thing people ask someone when they bump into the cafe while getting their morning coffee. Not for us. At least, not for me. I don't know if Amy realizes that I'm actually concerned about how well she slept last night, but the question does give her pause. After a short moment of what seems like her genuinely pondering this, she nods. Yep, sure did. Was it because of me? Did I actually help? Or were you just saying that to get me to stop asking questions? Good to hear. Emmy grins and begins warming up. So, ready again? Pfft, am I ready? Of course I'm ready. I was born ready. Emmy laughs at my bravado when we take off running. I keep a steady pace the whole time, breathing steadily. 
I still feel dead at the end, but at least I don't gasp like a fish out of water now. Heavy is positively beaming after the run today. Nice job, Asal. You're improving. You'll be half as fast as me in no time. This last line is delivered with a teasing grin that I've grown all too used to. Oh, how exciting. Heavy begins to run her sprints while I take a cooldown lap. She's really pushing herself today. By the time I've done with my lap, she's laying across one of the bleachers, looking exhausted. Goodness, not pushing it a little too much today, are you? You did just have a cold, you recall. Heavy gives an annoyed snort and sits up. Bah! Just trying to make up for last time, that's all. I went twice as hard today, you know. Good run always gets the kinks out, you know? Where's the mine, too? That's an important line. Oh? Heavy nods vigorously. Yep, it's a great outlet for that sort of thing. She does not explain further, and I don't ask. I suspect I know the real reason she went so hard today. Being sick had nothing to do with it. Something's bothering her. Maybe the nightmare. Maybe something else. But it's not my place to pry. She told me if she wanted me to know. I'm sure that comes in handy. You have no idea. <sighs> Another important line if you know the storyline that's going on. The sincerity in her voice confirms my suspicion. The only problem is, even though I know she told me if she wanted me to know, I still want to know. Something on your mind then? Amy doesn't seem surprised by my question. Instead, she shrugs. Nah, it's nothing worth getting worried about. She seems as if she's trying to convince herself as much as she's convincing me. I open my mouth to ask this if yesterday is responsible for her current state of mind, but think better of it. Too much risk of her taking the question the wrong way. Besides, I'm not even sure myself what to think about yesterday. Really, I can only get about as far as how it felt to have Emmy sleeping next to me before my brain shuts down. Having her before me now, covered in sweat and looking wryly at me, she's making it difficult to think. Yeah, I hear you. We better hurry to see the nurse. We're running short on time. Aren't we always? Emmy laughs at this, a dry chuckle that seems most un emmy like Too true. For a brief moment, she looks old, worn down by some old hurt. Just like yesterday, I can almost see her shouldering the burden and straightening up slightly. And then she's back to being Emmy again. Come on then, Hassel. Race ya! With a sudden smile, she darts off. Hey, no fair! I take off after her, knowing I won't catch her but not caring. Even if there's no chance of catching her, I'll still run after her. Emmy's waiting for me at the door as I arrive. Well, well, look who's finally showed up. Yeah, yeah. Enjoy your victory while you can. Emmy grins as the nurse pokes his head out the door. Well, there you are. Come in, Asel. In what has become a familiar routine by now, he checks my blood pressure and my heart rate. A bit fast today, isn't it? Yeah, I kind of raced Emmy here. The nurse laughs. That's never a good idea. He leans in to whisper to me in a conspiratory manner. I don't know if you've heard, but Emmy's a bit of a track star. I reel back and mock the fries. Really? She never mentioned it before? The two of us share a laugh. Did she do okay today? Cold seemed to bother her? Why don't you ask her? He rolls his eyes in exasperation. Of course I'm going to ask her too, but she'll tell me that she didn't have any problems regardless of whether she did or not. So I'm asking me because you're her friend and you'll probably tell me if she had trouble today. If puts it that way, it makes a lot more sense. She, didn't pretty, she seemed pretty good today, if a little more tired than usual. She was already feeling better when I dropped by yesterday, so I'm not that surprised. The nurse nods, though I notice he tends to slightly when I mentioned yesterday's visit. Well, that's good to hear. I figured it was just a 24-hour thing. Abby tends to recover quickly from the cold and the like. Hey, speaking of Emmy, are she in the track, Captain? Well, you know. A look of suspicion crosses his face. Why do you ask? It was just that they seem kind of close, and I was just curious, you know? And I'd never ask her, because that would be kind of embarrassing. So far, so good. That would really sell it. Besides, I think they'd make a cute couple. The nurse laughs. Well, I don't suppose you're the first to think that. 
but I think I can say with the certainty that the two of them will never do anything like that. Certainty? Yep. Not that I can tell you, of course. Confidentiality and all that. Yeah, right. You just like holding a secret over my head. That too. Right, get out of here. I'm a busy man, you know. <laughs> the voice makes it better. It does. I rolled my eyes at his last statement and had it out the door, motioning to Emmy to go in. The whole time, I'm trying to keep from doing a celebratory dance. The two of them will never do anything like that. That's precisely the sort of thing I wanted to hear. I'm half tempted to make some sort of move, some sort of a move on Emmy right now, but I think the nurse would probably disapprove. Besides, I still don't know exactly how Emmy feels about me. I mean, it's obvious that she cares about me as a friend, but something more than that? I can't be certain. Even so, I can't help but feel hopeful. I just need to figure out a good time to tell Emmy exactly how I feel. <sighs> Why am I yawning? It's not even 5 in the morning. That puzzle should keep me occupied for the rest of the day, at least. The rooftop is completely deserted. Normally I could count on Ren to be up here before me, but she's strangely absent. What if she decided to accompany Emmy to the cafeteria for once? That seems pretty unlikely, but it's all I can think of right now. Part of me wants to go look for Ren, but a far larger part of me is too pleased with the way the sun feels on my skin to care. I pick idly up my lunch while I wait for Ren and Emmy to show up. Or Emmy and Ren. Doesn't matter what order it's in. It does not take long for me to hear the sounds of someone coming up the stairs. I wait until the door opens to begin talking. Took you long enough. Keeping me from keeping me waiting for you, honestly. Two of you are... Huh? Well, that's odd. The only person standing in the doorway is Emmy, who looks mildly confused. What do you mean, huh? It's me, you know, Emmy. We ran in the mornings. She grins, and I feel my heart jump slightly in my chest at the sight. Yes, I knew that. Just confused. Where's Ren? Emmy's grin is replaced by a rather guilty-looking expression. Yeah, about that. I kinda... sorta... Give her my cold. Oh dear. Am I at risk too? It would make sense after all. Emmy and I were in close contact the other day. So what did she and Ren do that got her ill? Fan fiction! Steady on, old lad. Don't go down that road. <laughs> this sounds like the same thing. Ren's just probably got a worse immune system than me. Emmy seemed shocked by my comment, like she hadn't considered that before. I hope not. I feel terrible if you get ill because of me, Sal. Oh man, I think I feel a fever coming on. Oh man. Emmy looks horrified and then quickly shifts to a more angry expression. Sal, you stop getting sick this instant. I won't have it. Impulsively, she seizes me by the collar. Are you listening to me, Sal's immune system? Get your ass in gear. I give a smart salute. Duly noted, ma'am. <laughs> okay, this is pretty funny. I gotta admit, this is pretty funny. This is, it's putting Emmy in a better light. Yes. Yeah, it's got its funny parts. Emmy steps back and nods, satisfied. Good. We're not allowed to miss any of our morning runs, after all. But you missed a morning run. Emmy crosses her arms and looks at me haughtily. Yes, but that's a special case. It was me, and not you. That's not an explanation at all. Emmy looks flabbergasted. You're kidding, right? That explanation makes perfect sense. No, it doesn't. It's a blatant double standard. I don't see what that has to do with anything. Fine. Emmy seems pleased by her victory. Anyway, is Rin gonna be okay? She's not terribly ill, right? Amy shakes her head. Nope, she'll be fine. I got her some cold medicine that should help her. Oh god, the cold medicine! Ren's arc. Although I probably should have made sure she didn't try to take them all at once. Ah! Odd that you say that. <laughs> that has nothing to do with her story, by the way. She's done it before, you know. Somehow I don't find this all that surprising. I doubt Ren is one to pay attention to maximum doses, dosages and such. You should probably check on it. Check in on her later, then, just to make sure. Emmy shrugs. I'll stop by after practice. She'll be fine until then. I nod, figuring that line of conversation's over. 
The only problem is, I don't know what else to talk about. So, you got any more track meets coming up? This is a terribly roundabout run run way of trying to see if she's free on the weekend. If she's free, then maybe I can ask her on a date or something. Well, assuming I can actually get myself to actually form words. Amy shakes her head. Nah, not for another couple weeks, I think. Season's winding down. Oh yeah, I came in right in the middle of things, didn't I? This mean exams are coming up soon? I should probably look into that. What do you do on weekends if there's not a meet? An eyebrow goes, goes up, and Emmy gets a teasing look on her face. You're awfully inquisitive today, aren't you? I shrug and hope it looks casual. Just making conversation. I don't know what it's like to be a track star, after all. <laughs> Flattery. She waves a hand idly. Not actually that good, you know. You just so happen to see me on a good day, is all. You liar. Heh, <laughs> yeah. But humility is the sign of a good athlete. At least that's what my dad used to say. She shrugs and tries unsuccessfully to hide the rather troubled expression her face has taken on. Hey, what's up? You seem bothered by something. Emmy starts to deny it, then sighs in defeat. I wonder if she's too tired from being sick to get herself to deny it like usual. Or if she actually trusts me enough to, at this point to open up. Well, you remember last night? Do I ever? I settle for nodding, however. That's not the first time that's happened to me. Actually, I get them kind of... She pauses as if, it, as if it suddenly occurred to her what she's doing. It's almost like she's breaking some sort of personal rule here. Eh, I'd say that's about right. But she starts up again, choosing her words carefully. Well, not often, but... On occasion. Just one of those weeks where that happens. A sigh escapes her and she looks terribly frustrated. I reach over and give her a hug, which unlike last time doesn't seem to shock her. Instead, she seems to relax as my arms wrap around her. We stay that way for a while. Hey, you know I was serious last night. You really can't talk to me if stuff like this is bothering you. It's always difficult to do this sort of thing solo, you know? Emmy smiles and breaks the embrace, but stays leaning on my shoulder. Thanks, Asal. will be fine, I think. I can already see her reassembling herself, getting ready to bottle it all up again. I guess that topic's closed now. So hey, given any more thought to that career survey? Can't say I have. I don't tend to plan very far ahead, you know. Although I suppose I could start looking into college, huh? I shrug. I suppose, unless you were serious about that pirate thing. Last to check, pirates didn't have much need for universities. Unless there's like a pirate university out there somewhere. Amy giggles and starts to look a little like her old self, but there's a new element to her expression. Impish. That's how I'd describe it. Emmy looks impish, looking up at me with her head nestled into my shoulder. Would you come with me if I ran out to be a pirate? Of course I would. Who in the right mind would put it, pass up the opportunity to be pirates with you? Well, when you put it that way, I'm not sure. She giggles again. I notice that my heart seems to have sped up. It's probably due to Emmy's proximity to me. That hint of strawberries again. I can't help but grin as I gaze down at her. She's happy again. Hey, Yasao. Hmm? If you're gonna kiss me, you should probably do it soon. I think the lunch bell's gonna ring. My thoughts grind to a sudden halt. I'm pretty sure my mouth is hanging open in shock. All I can do is manage a strangled, huh? This amuses Emmy even more. You were thinking about it, weren't you? She sits up, bringing her face level with mine. I'd probably enjoy it, you know. You're a really... Well... She briefly composes herself, looking like she's about to say something important. If you haven't figured it out by now, I think I've developed a bit of a crush on you. You're gonna have to do something about that. This time for Grin short circuits several important thought processes. At this point, I turn toward her, and at another point, her arms move to turn... move to around my neck. And... At yet another, my arms are wrapped around her waist. I'll be damned if I could tell precisely what that, what, when that happened. Because at the moment, there's only a voice in the back of my head yelling at me to kiss her. I look into Emmy's eyes. There it is. The thing I saw yesterday on the bed. It's there again. It suddenly strikes me that she's worried that I'll reject her. What a silly worry for her to have.
Her lips taste faintly of strawberries. She leans into the kiss, and her arms tighten around the back of my head, making sure that I don't pull away. Not that there was any danger of that. There's a churning feeling in my gut. The world falls away. There's just me, and her, and this bench. My arms tighten, drawing her waist closer, entranced by the feel of her. I inhale her scent, my mind trying desperately to memorize everything about how she tastes, how she smells, how she feels. The ringing of the bell snaps us both back to reality, and we break the kiss. Amy's cheeks are slightly flushed, and she seems to be catching her breath. In her defense, so am I. We stand there for a few moments, trying to wrap our heads around what we've just done. Amy's the first to break the silence. So, want to grab dinner after we're done with practice? What a coincidence. I was about to ask you the same thing. Well, actually, I, was, I suppose it was going to be some kind of proper day on the weekend or something, but the thought was there, I think. Then he gives me a playful shove. Yeah, right. You were still in shock from how incredibly awesome I am at kissing. We begin to head down the stairs back to our respective classrooms. Hey, I didn't see you talking immediately afterward, either. That I didn't. See you after practice, this Al. She leans in quickly and gives me a quick kiss in the middle of the hallway, sending me into another brief state of mental freefall. As I head into my classroom, a giggling Misha greets me. Why, Heechan, you romantic, you! Did you confess on the rooftop? Did you? Or actually, I think it was the other way around. This sends Misha into a fresh fit of laughter. Young love is so un unpredictable, isn't it? This being Misha, I suppose I should have expected her to tease me over this. I guess. Before I can really respond, Muto's entered the room and Misha skips off to her seat, giggling all the while. I suspect that I'll get a lot of that sort of conversation now, especially seeing as how Emmy kissed me right in the middle of the hall. But somehow, I don't care about that. For the first time since arriving here, my heart feels light. Was I right? Yes, I was right! We made it to Act 3! Yeah! Perspective! I did it! Achievement unlocked! Actually be right about something! Yeah! Okay. Back to business. My head's in a spin all through Mutuo's class. I'm going to have dinner. With Emmy. Who wants to be my girlfriend, no less. A date. And then she kissed me. That kiss, I keep going back to it, playing it over my head again and again. Everything about that moment felt so right. My mind drifts off, lost in thoughts of Emmy. Nikai? Hello? It seems like I've drifted a bit too far. Huh? What? Egad, you've contracted some kind of amnesia! Someone get the nurse! The class chuckles at Muto's antics. Sorry, sir. Hmm, won't happen again and all that, right? Exactly. Muto brightens considerably. Well, lovely to hear. I'd hate to have my star pupil slapping off, after all. I've been doing well, but I hardly qualify as a star pupil, I think. Now, from what we know about Muto, you know, he sees Hisao as, you know, he really does see him as star pupil. Hisao is probably one of, if not, Muto's favorite students. You know, one of, if not the favorite. Just saying. I'm fairly certain that this class is the sort that everyone does well in. It's just memorizing formulas. True to my word, I managed to pay attention for the rest of the class. Nikai, may I have a word with you? What if I'm in trouble for earlier? Uh, sure. Am I in trouble? Muto looks genuinely confused for a moment. Beg your pardon? He tilts his head to one side and thinks for a moment. Oh, that. No, no, you're not in any sort of trouble. There's just a question I want to ask you. What's that? Nothing terrible. I was just wondering what your plans for after graduation are. You going to university? Yeah, I guess. Can't really see a reason not to go. Given any thought to what you'll study? Not really, no. I figure I'll come up with something when I get there. Muto laughs. Taking things as they come, eh? I'd argue against it, but that's how I... That's how I did things when I went to university. Well, not really. 
I knew I'd go into science, I just wasn't sure which one. Ended up with physics, but could have just well done for astronomy or what have you. Actually, I did go for chemistry th first, but there were all sorts of things. Uto trails off and frowns slightly. It takes a minute for him to recover his train of thought, and I wait patiently for him to continue. So anyway, I did a lot of physics as well, because I had an interest in that, but I wasn't sure if it was for me. So I went back to chemistry, and here we are. Yes? He smiles at me enthusiastically, as if waiting for someone to confirm that yes, he here's where we are. Somehow I get the feeling that Muto had a plan for this conversation, but I'll be damned if I can figure it out. I'm sorry, I'm not following you. Muto frowns and rubs his chin a bit, looking perplexed. He then snaps his fingers as if he was remembered what the point of all this was. Right, yes, you. Me? Yes, you should look into studying one of the sciences. You're fantastic at it. Unless you'd rather just go into math. Muto makes a sour face. Not a big fan of straight math. I always like the experiments more than the proofs. You're saying I should study science at university? Muto seems thrown off balance by my question. Well, sort of. You can also join the science club. Trouble is, there's not actually a science club. But there could be. You could even be a charter member. A founding father. Of course, you'd need to find other members. Well, only if you wanted to. We could just start it up with the two of us. And, um... I could give you things to read, and we could talk about them. Uh, and I could help you get ready for university and such as well. Wait! <laughs> this is why Muto's one of my favorite characters. Muto rummages around in his briefcase and tosses me a book. Read that. If it's interesting, then we could talk about it. <laughs> a brief history of time? I don't know if I actually want to read this, but Muto seems pretty excited about it. What's it about? Time. Space. Space-time. Black holes and such. But it's not that dense. Just to see if that sort of thing's interesting for you, you understand. Hang around after class and we can either discuss it, or I can show you how to make explosives in the lab. He waves a hand at my quizzical expression. Joking, sorry. Still, I kept you here long enough for now. Think about science as a career path, my guy. I think you'd enjoy it. Uh, okay, I will. Thank you for the book. Ladies and gentlemen, motherfucking Mudo. <laughs> One of my favorite characters in the novel. Yes. I leave the classroom and look up at the clock. Quite a chunk of time to kill until Emmy's out of practice. Guess I'll give this book a look. Probably should shower as well. Showering before a date's only proper, right? I head back to the dorms. I wonder where I'm supposed to meet Emmy anyway. She said after practice, but she didn't say where I should find her. I guess I just... I guess I could just swing by the track. That's probably best anyway. If she needs a shower, I can just wait for her in a room or something. Or in the hallway, I guess. That would be better as well. I take a quick shower, remembering to take my medication once I hop out. Now for a look at this book. I wake with a start. Shit! What time is it? A glance at the clock reveals that I've been asleep for nearly an hour. Thank goodness. Emmy's practice, practice should be finishing up soon. I throw on some casual clothes and head for the track. Somehow I get the feeling we won't be doing anything fancy for dinner. Emmy doesn't strike me as a very fancy sort of person. Still, I suppose there's a lot I have yet to know about Emmy. Despite our newfound closeness, I still don't feel like I know her as well as I should. Ah well, I have lots of time to fix that. To be honest, I'm looking forward to getting to know her more. I'm so caught up in my own thoughts that I hardly re register that I'm already at the track. Emmy is nowhere to be found. I don't even see signs of the track team. This could be embarrassing. I turn to head toward the girls' dormitory when I hear a shout. Hey, Sal! I turn around to see Emmy making a beeline for me with a gym bag slung over her shoulder. She's changed into some decidedly more casual clothing, a pair of shorts and an olive green top. Her running blades have been replaced by more realistic looking legs that probably won't f wouldn't fool anyone. Maybe doesn't seem to care about that, a fact which makes me smile. Hey, you came! I mean, I figured you would, but still. I suddenly find myself wrapped in a rather affectionate hug, and it proves to be impossible for me to keep what must be the world's largest grin off my face. Well, of course I came! I'd be crazy not to, right? 
Let me, let me ponder for a moment. You know, that's true. I mean, I'm pretty amazing after all. I shrug in response. I certainly think so. It's an offhand remark, which is why I'm surprised to see that it seems to have caught Emmy by surprise. She blushes and smiles warmly at me before planting a kiss on my lips. Now it's my turn to be surprised. Emmy step, steps back, resting, resting her weight on her back heel, looking pleased with herself. My brain fumbles for an appropriate response. I should compliment you more often. Emmy laughs and gives me a playful shove. Jerk. I throw an arm around Emmy's shoulders and am pleased when she immediately leans into me as if I were the, as if it were the most natural thing in the world. So, where to? I'm not actually sure. Where do people go on dates around here anyway? That's a damn good question. I've got no idea. Why don't we just head down to the Aura Mart and grab something portable? Amy's face brightens at this idea. A picnic! I think you're onto something, Asal. Emmy snakes around my arm around my waist and we begin to head for the front gate. I'm entirely unsure of what I'm meant to do in this situation, but at least Emmy seems to be equally clueless. Despite the relaxing feeling of being with Emmy, I still can't help feeling a little tense. What if I do something wrong? I'd have to make an ass out of myself. The trip to the Aura Mart, yeah, Aura Mart is accompanied by Emmy's chatter and how, about how practice went. Now, I think I'm going to stop the video right here, because, you know, we're at like the 32 minute mark. But, real quick, I forget where I saw this. But I'm just going to take a shot in the dark here and say that this 7-Eleven looking place was actually named after one of the creators. Because one of the creators is named... Goes by the name Aura. I remember seeing somewhere that that's where they got the name. I don't remember where though. But yeah, that's pretty much the end of this video, so... Next time on Let's Recount kind of a Shoujo. I don't know what we're going to do. So... Until next time, I'm Rickling, you are the viewer. Uh, give me the like or favorite if you like this video. Leave me a comment telling me what you think and all that stuff. And I will see you guys in the next one. Ooh.